Hello everyone, this is a quick review for finding the ECGs. Now, today we'll try to diagnose every possible disease with the help of ECG, starting from P to QRS complex, the T and even up to the UV. And we'll also understand the chronic vessels with the help of the ECG, like how can we find out that which area of the heart has undergone the myocardial infarction. But before this, we'll give a quick review to the ECG, uh, which is this is a P wave that shows the atrial depolarization, and after this is a QRS complex. It obviously shows the ventricular depolarization and that also masks the atrial repolarization and after this we have the T wave that shows the ventricular depolarization and sometimes even in rare cases we have this U wave that mostly occurs due to hypokalemia. We'll discuss it later and uh, we move to the first disease which is P wave inversion. Now in the P wave inversion what happens is that your pacemaker shifts from sinoatrial to the AV ventricular node. This is because this is a heart and this is a sinoatrial node, this is a ventricular AV node. What happens is that sinoatrial node is a pacemaker that fires the current in all possible directions. Now the current is not a scalar not a vector quantity, it's a tensor quantity. Now these tensor quantities have there's some directions that are dependent upon their coordinate. So whenever the coordinates change, the direction changes. This is explained with the help of the resultant vector that has the same effect as all the vectors combined. So the final resultant vector is towards the AV node. Obviously the heart is in angle of 59 degree. Now, at this point, what happens is that when the pacemaker shifts from sinoatrial to the AV node, this AV node is now the new pacemaker that, that fires the current in all possible directions. And if we take its resultant vector, the resultant vector is in the direction opposite to this. Now what happens is that ECG negative leads are towards the base of the heart and ECG positive leads are towards the apex of the heart. That's why in Anthovian's triangle both the negative leads are at your shoulder, which is probably your right shoulder, and both the positive leads are at your foot. If you see this Anthovian's triangle, like this, both the negative leads are at your shoulder and both the positive leads are at your foot. Now, what happens is that this resultant vector that is carrying the positive charge is moving towards this negative uh, throw of the ECG. Whenever this happens in the voltage time graph, the P wave is inverted. Actually, the P wave should give a peak, but the case is now changed. The P wave is inverted. This is because this is firing the current that has the opposite direction it's moving towards the negative electrode of the ECG. So this is all about P wave inversion that causes the pacemaker shift from sinoatrial to the atrioventricular node. Now we move to the next slide which is absent P wave. Now whenever the P wave is absent it's because of the atrial fibrillation or AV nodal paroxysmal tachycardia. Now in AV fibrillation there is bursticness of currents. The currents move widely in all possible directions. There's no coordination in the current. So what happens is the current moving in one direction cancels the effect of the current moving in the opposite direction like this. So there's no amplification in the voltage time graph and uh, there's neither the wave goes upward, nor the wave goes downward, because one vector cancels the effect of the other. So there's no P wave. And but we have a QRS complex and a T wave. So when the P wave is absent, it's, it's probably because of the atrial fibrillation and AV nodal paroxysmal tachycardia. In paroxysmal tachycardia, heart rate is more than the normal. So when the heart moves fastly, this is probably because of the current. Okay the uncoordinated current that moves in all directions. So this can cause the obsession of the P wave. Now if we now we find the next disease which is P wave large and notched. Now when we see the ECG we normally see the P wave like this, QRS complex and a T wave. But when the P wave is large and notched like this. Okay? Then QRS complex and a T wave. This is because of the pneumotron. Pneumotron is defined as the hypertrophy of the left atrium of the heart. We have this left atrium, so P wave is large and notched. Now, why this happens is because this is the sinoatrial node and this is the left atrium. Now, when this gets enlarged like this, what happens is that all the fibers are stretched. Now the current has to travel a larger distance to move this. So the P wave is large on the voltage time graph. It takes a more time than the normal. Normal P wave takes 
less time and it takes more time because the fiber is stretched and it's taking more time and it's not it's not because the current moves when here it forms multiple peaks like this because the fibers are now stretched so this is the region the reason why p when p wave is large and notch the reason could be p material the next disease is P wave tall and peaked. This is similar to the previous one. When the P wave is tall and peaked like this, QR is complex and T wave. This is P pulmonary. It's same as previous, but this time P pulmonary is defined as the hypertrophy of the right atrium instead of the left atrium. So the sinoatrial fibers are stretched and this is also enlarged in this way. So there's more current generated. Whenever the more current is generated, the voltage increases on the graph. So when the voltage increases, this P wave also increases in its amplitude. The next disease we have is P wave superimposed to QRS complex now. This is because of the AV nodal and AV bundle premature contraction. Now, when the P wave is superimposed to the QRS, like this was the P, QRS, and T, this P wave is superimposed to QRS and this gives like this fashion. This is because of AV nodal or AV bundle premature contraction. Now, what happens is that this is your heart, it, it has sinoatrial node that fires the impulse, then these impulse stay on the AV node for some time. For letting all the HA to contract and fully push the blood into the ventricles and then this is fired but there's a premature contraction in this case when, 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 it, when there's a premature contraction there's no delay between P and QRS this is because your ventricles have contracted before the signal so when this happens there is no time you see on the voltage time graph there's shortening of the time and this P wave gets superimposed onto the Q wave. Now, the next thing is about two or three P waves and ratio one QRS complex. Now, whenever there's two, three P waves and one QRS complex, it's because of the age of further, not like this is P wave, then again P wave, or sometimes again P wave, then we have QRS complex, and then we have this T wave. Now, there are two or three P waves ratio 1 QRS complex. So this is because of the atrial flutter. The main difference between atrial flutter and uh, fibrillation is that atrial flutter is coordinated while the atrial fibrillation is not coordinated. So in atrial flutter we have different P waves ratio Q waves. The Q is probably one. This is because the impulses are not under the control of the uh, SA node no more. So they are wide enough to move in the heart wherever they want. So the next thing is about depressed PQ segment. This is the ECG wave. We have P and Q. Q is depressed a lot, R, S, and T. So in this, we have a depressed Q, PQ segment. This is because of the pericarditis. Pericarditis is the inflammation of the pericardium of the heart. Now, whenever there is inflammation, what happens is that there is leakage of the fluid. What happens is that there is a release of some allergic substances, you know, all the conditions of the inflammation that it gets hardened, it gets stiff, it, it's, it's red, and uh, in the pericarditis, there's PQ depression. Now, the depression is because due to the seepage of leakage, you know, the current was moving in the opposite direction with a positivity vector towards the negative lead of the electrode of ECG, so it was giving a natural negative depression. When there was inflammation, there was leakage of the fluid. So that resulted in further deepening of the Q wave. So pericarditis can cause depression of the PQ segment. So the next thing is deep Q wave. Whenever there's deep Q wave, this generally causes the myocardial infarction. We'll study it later, like P and Q, R, S, and then T. Now in this, the Q wave is much deep. What happens is that this is your heart. P is the atrial depolarization, QRS complex is the ventricular depolarization. When the Q wave is formed, the current that was moving in this wave, okay, some of the fibers go back towards the negative lead of the electrodes of ECG with this positivity on the vector, like this. This naturally forms this Q wave, then this moves very strongly towards the ventricles. This is a strong vector that, so that it gives a strong R wave and 
again back when the direction changes or reversions this is the s wave so whenever the q wave is deep it means more of the current is going back so the next finding of the ecg is narrow q wave plus deepened t wave and uh, this generally occurs uh, because of hypertrophic cardiomyopathies okay so whenever there's hypertrophy okay there's enlargement of heart and cardiomyopathies other diseases there's narrow q wave plus deepened t wave now the next thing is p wave inverted plus superimposed to t wave this tells about the atrial paroxysmal tachycardia now in this the p wave is inverted as described before superimposed to the t wave now this is the p wave qrs and t wave but the p wave is now superimposed to this last t wave p qrs and t so this is the superposition of the p wave onto the t wave of the previous ecg this is because of the tachycardia now in the tachycardia we have the voltage time graph i'm sorry the voltage on, is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis now in tachycardia the heart contracts faster than the normal so when the heart contracts faster so what happens is that there's no time or no delay between two different ECGs that's why P wave is superimposed onto the T wave of the previous ECG next we have short PQ segment plus wider QRS complex plus second SD segment now this is because of the wolf Parkinson white syndrome now in this we have the heart the wolf Parkinson syndrome what happens is that a new short circuit is formed inside the heart like this is the sinoatrial node this is the AV node and the current is fired from sinoatrial to the AV node through th uh, three main fibers which are anterior is the backman posterior is the thoral and the middle one is the back back so these three fibers conduct the current from sinoatrial to the AV node but in wolf parkinson white syndrome there's a short circling a new fiber arises onto the left side of the heart like this and uh, this causes the PQ second shortening of the PQ segment because it is now taking less time because more of the current is going through the heart so in the voltage time graph which is generally of ECG there's a short PQ segment like this instead of PQ this is a short one and wider QRS now when the, cur the current reaches in the ventricles there is a QRS complex one is the main current and the other is the short circling current the, now there's wider QRS this is because these two currents interfere with each other and so it takes more time to reach the apex of the heart so more time is taken by this current so there's wider QRS complex the second ST now this is an interesting part there are two ST segments formed in this one ST is the normal and the second ST is because of this short circuiting part now we have PQRS and T now this is the ST segment of your heart there are two different ST segments formed because of the short circuiting of the heart now prolonged PR interval is because of the first degree heart block in first degree heart block generally the heart block refers to the blockage of the impulse from traveling to the heart myocardial infarction is the tissue death while blockage is the blockage of impulses this is the main difference so in the first degree heart block the impulses die out very quickly now when these impulses die out and they're slow enough to be conducted from sinoatrial to the AV node if if it were a healthy heart the impulses would have traveled easily like this but now it's a first degree heart block so what happens is that these impulses are weaker enough to travel to the AV node so they some of them die out and some of them barely reach the AV node so this results in the prolonged PR interval because it's taking now more time to reach to the other part of the heart like P Q R. now it is taking more time to travel to the heart now the next thing is about PR elongation plus QRS stops in this the PR segment is elongated and second degree heart block is also known as Mobitz one type or VEC back type in this the PR elongation plus QRS stops this is your ECG graph what happens is that the 
PR is elongated like P, Q, R, S, T. And in the second ECG, this PR is more elongated and sometimes there's QRS drops. So like PR is elongated, no QRS is formed and then there's a T wave. So this is because of the second degree heart flow. In the second degree heart flow, the, the impulses are further weakened. So most of them don't even reach the low part of the heart and they die out on the way. So this results in the dropping of the QRS complex because none of them have reached this ventricular portion here and they have died already earlier here and the PR elongation is because the impulses are weak and they're taking now more time to reach from one part of the heart to the other and this was all about the second degree heart block now we'll discuss the QRS drops as told earlier second degree heart block they're now Q QRS drops the QRS segments are dropped and the PQRS no relation now in the first degree the impulses were quite weaker in second degree the impulses were much weaker and the third degree heart block the impulses are weakest of all so in the third degree there's no PQRS relation the heart has now escaped the normal current and there's no relation between P wave and a QRS so the ECG that find sometimes gives P, the no QRS complex, then there's no relation, then it gives the T wave, then sometimes no P, then, then, then again it gives the T wave. So there's no complete relation between the P wave and the QRS complex because the heart has escaped and the impulses are quite weaker to reach. So the next thing is about high QRS complex. Now this could be because of the certain reasons here and uh, this includes many reasons. and. Uh, First of all, discuss about the right ventricular hypertrophic. This is because of the steno, uh, st stenotic pulmonary valve. Whenever the right ventricle of the heart is, is enlarged, it gives high QRS voltage. In the ECG graph, the QRS gives a high shoot like this, higher than the normal. Because in the hypertrophy, when the, when the, when the muscle part of the heart has enlarged enough, so there is more conduction of the current through this muscle part. Okay, when the, when the more current passes through this muscular part, the more voltage is, is recorded and there's high peak on this ECG graph. Now, when this, the same phenomena occurs on the left ventricular, ventricles of the heart, this is called hypertension. This is the main reason for the left, left side and this is the reason for the right side. Now, whenever the ventricles contract before the time, there's also a high QRS complex because the impulse that is coming from the sinoatrial to the atriventricular node and then moving again forward is added to the premature contraction of the ventricles. Now, all these vectors are positive and, to, and are moving towards the positive electrode of the ECG. So instead of only this one impulse that should come, now there are two different premature contract, contracted impulses. So that causes an increase of the voltage and so there's a higher shoot in this case. Now the next thing is about low QRS complex and it is because of certain reasons that old myocardial infarction. Now when there's old myocardial infarction it means there was a person that had suffered through the heart attack a long time ago. Now that tissue has has been dead by now and it's no longer working. So when the tissue is dead, it cannot uh, conduct the current. So this results in low QRS complex voltage as compared to the normal. And whenever there's fluid in the pericardium, this fluid causes the hindrance in conduction of the current. So there's again low QRS complex. And the third reason is emphysema. You know, the lungs that surround the heart also assist in conduction. You know, in the precordial region where the heart lies, the current moves about the chest that's why ECG leads record current in your whole body the current moves even up to your foot so the lungs are nearer to your heart and they also conduct they also play a role in conduction of the current so whenever there's destruction of the walls of the alveoli there's a lower surface area of the alveoli as a result there is less conduction so as a result there's less peak formed in the QRS complex now the next thing is prolonged QRS complex it's because of the multiple reasons. Now we'll discuss it one by one. First is the ventricular hypertrophy. When the ventricles are enlarged enough, there's prolonged QRS complex. This is because an enlarged ventricle, 
this would have a larger number of fibers of the muscles as compared to the normal fibers. So now the current requires more time to flow through it than to the normal one. So that results in taking more time than the normal and in the ECG voltage time graph, when, when the more time is required, so there's prolonged QRS complex like this Q, R, S and then T. Now it has taken more time than the normal. Now another reason is the Purkinje block. When the Purkinje fibers are blocked that are after the AV bundle, bundle of A's, they are Purkinje fibers. When these fibers are blocked, they can no longer transmit the impulses. So when, it, when, when they can no longer transmit the impulses or transmit the impulses in a very slow manner, it takes again more time to reach and again there is a prolonged QRS complex. Now there's premature ventricular contraction. When there's premature ventricular contraction, the ventricles are contracted before. Okay, so they contract before the original impulse has come. So this results in prolonged QRS complex because they are premature, they're not mature. So the speed of the impulse is quite slower than enough than the normal one. So it's going to take more time again. So that will result in more prolonged QRS complex wave. Okay, now there's right or left bundle branch block. This is the same manner. It's, the, it's going to take more time again. Now, there are two more different things. One is the right bundle branch block and the second is the left bundle branch block. Now, we have a heart in this. It has two branches, the right one and the left one. Okay, whenever they are blocked, there's prolonged QRS complex. As I told earlier, that they are going to take more time than normal. Now, the interesting thing is that whenever there's right bundle branch block, the, the V1 gives you a pattern like M. So in the right bundle branch block, you get a pattern like this one for the V1 lead. And in the right bundle branch block, you get this pattern in the V2 lead. Now the V2 lead pattern resembles this W and the V1 pattern resembles this M1. So you can remember it by using the word William, okay? And in the left bundle branch block, okay, you get lead one pattern like W, like this, it's like a W, okay? And you get lead V2, it's obviously your chest pattern as M, like this is a peak QRS complex and this one. This is for V1 and this is for V2. So that was about the prolonged QRS complex. And next we have odd QRS complex or double, triple peaks. And there are multiple reasons for this. That include the Purkinje block. Whenever the Purkinje fibers are blocked, there is odd QRS complex that does not resemble the normal QRS like it's this one. Or double or triple peak, it has now two, three peaks. This is because of the Purkinje block. The impulses are blocked and the ECG leaves cannot cannot record it in a normal manner. Then there's tissue destruction and scar replacement. There are some other fibers of the cell that are replaced. So that results in poor conduction of the current that probably causes the double or triple peaks. And uh, now we have the RR interval. Uh, this is a very important point. Now, first we can calculate the rhythm of the heart. Then we can call, calculate the rate. Actually, Whenever you, you are supposed to see, first you see the rhythm of the heart. When it, now I draw ECG, this is P, QRS complex and T. Then again, this is a P, QRS complex and T. Now, this is R wave and this is another R wave. The difference between two R R interval defines the rhythm of the heart. If this di distance is normal, the heart is said to be beating with normal rhythm. And this is known as normal sinus rhythm. To calculate the rhythm of the heart, we just see these two R waves, if they're lying at constantly, constant different, then the heart is said to be beating with normal rhythm. Now sometimes there's not, not this defined rhythm of the heart that results in irregular rhythm of the heart and causes the atrial fibrillation. Sometimes there's regularly irregular rhythm, like this P, Q, R, S, T, E, QRS, T, P, QRS, T. So you see, this is irregular, this is equal, and this is not equal. 
So they're repeating this whole sequence is repeating regularly. So this is known as regularly irregular rhythm and we can also find the rate of the heart. To find the rate of the heart, there are first two things to be considered. First, either the rhythm of the heart is normal or this is not normal. When the rhythm of the heart is normal, we apply the formula 300 divided by RR large boxes. Okay, so what is this? We have this P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. Now, these are two RR waves. Okay, so you count how many large boxes, large boxes are in between these two RR waves. Okay, normally there are there are four RR boxes, one, two, three, and four. So when we divide 300 by four, we get a normal 75 beats per minute. This is for the normal rhythm of the heart. This way you can find the rate of the heart. And when the rhythm is not normal, what you do is you find the number of R waves in six seconds multiplied by 10. Okay, number of R waves in six seconds and this could be around about 8 or 9 or 10 or okay so in the six boxes you can find 8 9 or 10 r waves in 6 seconds you can find 8 9 or 10 r waves so in this way you can find the rhythm of of an abnormal heart that's not beating with with rhythm okay now we have qrs complex positive deflection at the end and uh, this is because of the arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia now in this what happens is that in the qrs complex there's a positive shoot at the end like this one there's a positive deflection at the end of the qrs complex this is because of arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia the right ventricular has has no rhythm so this results in the positive deflection at the end of the QRS complex. Now the next thing is ST elevation as I told earlier is the sign of myocardial infarction and also because of the pericarditis we got ST elevation so there's uh, so what happens is that there's no normal repolarization okay so the ST part of the ECG is elevated and this could also be because of the recent injury. Now the ST elevation is when when, when with the negative T wave, this is because of Brogada syndrome. Now in this, the ST wave is elevated, plus there is negative T wave, like this. Like this. The, the T wave is negative and ST wave is elevated. The next thing is about ST segment depression. When the ST segment is depressed, it is called mastomy, known as the elevated myocardial infarction. This, this can cause the inf uh, myocardial infarction or heart attack too. And uh, ischemia of the heart is another reason for ST depression. Now we have prolonged QT interval. When the QT interval is prolonged, it's called LQTS syndrome. Okay, the QT interval like this P, Q, R, S, and T. Now this is the Q and this is the T. This QT interval is when prolonged. This is called LQTS syndrome. This is because the impulse is taking up more time to reach to the other part of the heart as compared to the normal heart. And it's called towards the points because the impulses are now now some kind kind of mad. They are not under the control of the normal heart. So now there's J point is known as Osborne wave elevation. This is because of the hypothermia in the ECG. Okay, we have a P wave, then we got the QRS complex, and then we have the T wave. Now what happens is that after the S wave, we got J point here. Okay, I've I mentioned it J point, and after the J point, we get J60 point here. Okay. Now, when there is J point elevation, this J point is elevated. This is known as Osborne wave. This is because of the hypothermia. J point is the point where all the electrical activity of the heart is neutral. So when this rises, there's hypothermia. The patient may be suffering from coldness. 
So whenever there's negative T wave, this is because of ischemia. So in ischemia, there is lack of the nutrition or the lack of the blood. So the T wave generally shows the repolarization. So when this wave is negative, okay, it should be positive. So what happens is that during the T wave, the heart muscles are going under repolarization. So whenever there's no blood or no nutrition to this part of the heart, but it's muscular parts. So this is the ischemic condition. So the T wave is negative. So the repolarization direction reverses because there's no blood supply here, but there is blood supply here. So that so that results in the formation of a negative T wave. So digitalis toxicity has the same effect as ischemia, so it also causes the T wave neg negativity. So now there's the biphasic T, T wave. Now what, what is this biphasic? First we have P, then we have QRS complex, and then we have a T wave. Now the T wave is normally in the upward direction here. Now all the contents that are above the graph or this zero point are in one phase and below this are on another phase. So when a wave lies on both the planes, above and below the zero line, it's called the biphasic. Okay, in the biphasic, there, it could be because of ischemia or digitalis toxicity. Now we have T wave opposite polarity. This is again ischemia of the heart or it could be the myocardial infarction or slow conduction of repolarization wave or the premature ventricular contraction. I've already explained all of them before. When, and then there's T wave elevation. Now T wave can also elevate due to ischemia because there's no more, no more nutrition to the heart. Like if we draw the ECD for again million time like this, and the T wave is elevated like this. This could be because of the ischemia, but, some, but the location of ischemia is now changed. The ischemia is somewhere here, because uh, somewhere here, because the depolarization wave is in opposite direction, and the, there's no blood in here. So this gives a high peak or upward shoot because of the ischemia. Now there's hyperkalemia because of the potassium. The kalium is very used for potassium ion. So whenever there's hyperkalemia, there's more potassium. You know, the cell membrane that is present in the cell, and this cell is present in your heart. This is a cardiac cell. So in this cell membrane, you have sodium potassium pump that pushes two potassium and three sodium inward and outward respectively. So in the hyperkalemia, there's more and more potassium. You know, the actual curve of the impulse that shows, you know, action potential graph that shows depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization and then again back. This repolarization is because of this potassium. And so when there's more potassium in your heart, there's more repolarization. When there's more repolarization, there's T wave elevation. Now the next thing is T wave depression. That's exactly the opposite of the previous one. When there's less potassium in your heart, there's there's less repolarization that ultimately leads to the less T wave and this causes the T wave depression. Now the next thing is about the U wave. That, now this, this does not occur naturally and it's a very very rare thing that can occur and it's because of the hyperkalemia. When the potassium is sometimes low on your heart, so that causes the elevation of a U wave. So that's because of the hypokalemia. There's no potassium, so a new wave that is formed after the T wave, like this, we have a P, then we have a QRS, and then we have T. And after the T wave, we sometimes get a new U wave, and this is probably because of the hypokalemia, because this T wave has not fully repolarized the heart, and there is a pause, or and your heart again starts to repolarize. This is because of the U wave. Now, the next thing is coarse ECG. Now, when there's coarse ECG, the reason is ventricular fibrillation. The ECG you, you looks, looks like this. There's irregular course. However, it should look like this. So this ECG is replaced by this one. There's a coarse irregular ECG that's probably because of ventricular fibrillation and the ventricular fibrillation. There's no coordination and the impulses spread out through the heart without any control and that results in the formation of this irregular ECG. 
So that was all about today. Thank you so much. <laughs>